Hi, it's Miles here at Fabricana. I'm very excited today. I'm actually in my office, which is part of the excitement because I am beautifying my office today with this beautiful Roman shade that I have just finished making. And you can make it too by watching this video. Um, I do want to say, as I'm lowering the cord, um, very important, safety first, of course. There are cords involved with this project, so if you have small children, please make sure that the cords are out of reach when the, the shade is up. So uh, we've covered the safety. Um, I also want to say um, that we have a wonderful Instagram page with lots of content, some photos, some videos, lots of fun things showing things that are in our stores, um, lots of projects that are coming up, lots of DIY projects as well. Um, and a lot of that content is available on our Facebook page as well. Very exciting news. By the time this video comes out, we should have launched our online store, which we've been working on for a long time, which will not have everything that is in our brick and mortar stores, but it will have a lot of inspirational fabrics for you to peruse and order for yourself. I have to say for this video, in a time of COVID, we did start filming this back in February before everything kind of went crazy. So if you notice, in just a couple of seconds, I'm about to get younger by about six months. <laughs> you can see maybe a few more lines on my face and a bit more gray hair, um, but I will get younger in just a moment. Um, so uh, just a couple things to say about the shade. Obviously, um, it's very economical. It takes very little fabric. Um, it's also fully lined. We did use an inexpensive lining, but if you'd like, you could use a dim out or a um, blackout lining, and that would really help with light control. As well, it could also help a little bit with kind of heat savings, so it can be a very economical project, as well as bringing a lot of beauty into your room. So all of that being said, um, <laughs> referring you to our social media, talking about the time warp, talking about how excited I am about this project, we need to get started, so let's get to it. So before we get started, I just want to talk about the materials that we're going to need for this project. So of course, um, we need our main fabric. So I've uh, picked up this beautiful uh, print here, beautiful blue-green. We also need some drapery lining. Uh, we've done some inexpensive, just a uh, poly cotton lining, but you could use a blackout lining as well if you really want to block the light. I have a length of one by two, and this is the length. Um, is the width of the window. Um, I've also cut my doweling. I've used 3 8 doweling and I've cut those to the width of the window as well. There is a heavier metal rod and this is going to go into the hem and that's going to really help weigh down the blind so it kind of comes down nice and easily. Um, I've cut this a little bit narrower than the width of the window, um, about a half inch narrower so that it's not kind of poking in the corners. I have Velcro. We have the soft side and, and the scratchy side, kind of male-female there. Uh, again, the width of the window. Um, I have some hardware specific to a Roman shade. So this is a, well, this is a cord lock actually. I have one of those and I have four, uh, three pulleys um, that will be spaced across the top of the window. I have some nice clear rings. Um, that will be stitched to the back of the blind. I have some drapery cord. That's a very strong, uh, durable, um, it's really smooth, so it runs through the pulleys really well. I have some thread. I have thread that is the color of my main fabric. I also have thread that's the color of my lining. Um, I also have a little cord pull. So I'm gonna like put all my cords together with one pull. I have some one inch uh, cotton twill tape. This is going to be used to create the channels for the doweling on the back of the blind. Um, I also have some like supplies, a tape measure. Um, I'm using a rotary cutter to cut out the, um, the fabrics. I have some fabric scissors that I'll also need and you will need if you're not using a rotary cutter as well. Um, lots of pins. Um, something to mark your fabric with. I'm just using a nice chalk marker. Uh, have some hand sewing needles will be needed to sew the rings onto the back. And I've also got a pencil to do a bit of calculating. Um, so I think that's about it. We need obviously a sewing machine in working condition. Um, 
a good operating condition that can do a nice straight stitch and an ironing board and an iron. So knowing that, uh, once you have all the supplies, we can get started. So let's talk about cutting our materials, our fabric and our lining. Um, so obviously what size you're cutting is going to be relative to the size of your window. So my window is 46 and a half inches wide and it's 41 tall. Um, so um, for the main fabric, which I've already cut out, I took the width of my window and added three inches and that becomes the width of my fabric and I've taken the height of my window and added two inches. So basically for the width, we get an inch and a half allowance on either side and for the hem, um, for the length, we have a one and a half inch hem and a half inch um, seam at the top. And to cut the lining, we take the width of our window and we actually subtract one inch because the lining is narrower than the blind. Um, this includes a half inch um, seam allowance on either side and then we cut the length of the lining actually exactly the height of the window. This allows us for the half inch seam at the top and a half inch at the bottom but the hem of the lining doesn't go right to the bottom of our blind so the length of our uh, lining is exactly the height of our window. So for the hem of our, um, our blind, to make it really nice and clean, we're actually going to do a mitered corner in the corner and that will make it look really nice on the opposite side when you see it um, through the window. So what we've done is I've actually made a little template to cut out our mitered corner. And I've basically drawn a line here, the, um, the width of our hem, which is one and a half inches. And I've done the same thing here, drawn a line one and a half inches and that is our um, kind of our seam allowance on the side panels. Um, so I've seen where they intersect here and then I've also marked over the same distance mirrored an inch and a half here and I've made a mark there and then the hem I've measured up from that point and made a mark here. I've connected those two lines through this this connector point here and drawn a line there and then I've added a half inch seam allowance. So hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense when we're sewing it but for the time being uh, we can use this template to cut. Uh, this is just the two bottom corners of our main fabric. I'm going to use my ruler and my chalk marker to mark that. And I'm simply going to trim off that corner. And I'm going to do this on the other side as well. The other hem. I have to just flip my template over to get the right angle and cut off that corner. Again, this will be a lot clearer when I show you how to sew the miter. So before we can do any sewing, we're going to prep our lining piece by pressing up the hem by a half inch. So there's generally a right and a wrong side to the lining, so the smoother shiny side is the face of the lining. So I'm going to fold that back a half inch. I'm just going to double check that with a ruler quickly. And we're just going to continue pressing that half inch all the way across the hem of the lining. And once we've got that done, we're gonna move on to our first sewing step. So before we start sewing, we're gonna pin our lining to our main fabric. So I've got the hem of the main fabric facing away from me and that half inch hem that I did on the lining facing away from me. So I'm gonna match up the top of the blind lining and the main fabric together. I'm going to apply pins. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and smooth, well lined up all the way down the length of the blind. And so for the length of my blind I've used five pins. So I've done that for one side and then I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Now remember 
your lining is narrower than your main fabric, so they're not going to lay flat once they're pinned. But we will line up the other side, pin exactly the same way. I've got the top of the lining matched with the top of the main fabric. And then just putting pins to hold it all in place while we're sewing. So there we have both sides pinned. And now we're ready to go to the sewing machine. So we're going to start sewing uh, from the top of our drape. So the lining is facing up. Uh, we've got the fabric underneath. And please note that in the bobbin, we have the blue-green thread that matches our main fabric. And in the needle, we have white thread. Uh, it's not necessary for this step, but we will need that combination when we're stitching from the back of the drape um, to do the doweling channels. So we're sewing with a half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do a little back stitch to start. I'm gonna try not to talk while the machine is on. I'm gonna remove my pins as I sew. It's a nice straight line, but we wanna make it nice and even. Now please note we're not gonna sew all the way to the bottom of the lining. We need to leave the lining free in order to do our miter corner on the main fabric. So that's really important to note. So we're getting closer to that hem. I mentioned we don't want to stitch right to the hem. We're going to leave about five or six inches unstitched. We'll do a back stitch to make it secure. So there we have it. We've left that much of the lining unsewn, and that'll give us lots of room to stitch the mitered corner. And I'm going to turn this around and do the same thing to the other side. So once we have our two side seams stitched down and we've left that opening near the hem, we're going to turn this big tube inside out to press those seams nice and flat. So I'm just going to open it out on the ironing board. And I'm going to have the seam allowances going toward the lining. And that'll stay nice and flat. Now don't forget we have this kind of extra flap at the bottom here. I'm going to continue pressing that half inch seam all the way down the length of the lining. That'll make it easier to hand sew later if we already have that press in place. So that's one side. I'm just going to work that around to do the other side seam. Now this time I've got the seam allowance coming toward me, again toward the lining. I'm just going to quickly press that in place. You can ignore the sound of a truck backing up outside. <laughs> And then just like I did on the other side, at this open part of the lining, I'm going to fold that back a half inch and just continue that nice crease right down, down the length of the lining. Once you've got that done, we're ready to do the mitered corner. So we're looking at this bottom corner. We've got it cut at a 45 degree angle. As you recall, we added a half inch seam allowance to this corner in order to stitch the miter. So all we have to do is take this fabric, fold it right sides together. So we're taking the bottom edge, lining it up with the side edge. And we're going to start stitching from that center point with a half inch seam allowance. Nice back stitch. It's a short seam. Do another nice back stitch. I'm going to trim my threads. While I'm doing that, I'm also going to trim the other threads and I'm going to clip the corner and that'll make it much easier to turn the miter. I'm going to repeat this for the other corner where we have the miter and then I will meet you at the ironing board. So once we've stitched both of our mitered corners and clipped that little corner, we're going to leave them kind of fabric right sides 
uh, together and we're going to press open the seam that we just stitched. We're going to do that for both corners. We're going to turn our corners inside out so if you can kind of pinch right into that corner, turn it through. You might want to use a point turner. Don't stick your scissors in there. They will cut through the fabric. I'm going to do that for the other corner as well, kind of like putting my finger right inside, pinching it, turning it through, then just kind of rolling that seam all the way out to a nice sharp point. Then I'm just going to quickly press that nice corner flat. I'm going to press the hem of the main fabric across the whole width of the blind. Now our hem allowance is an inch and a half, so I'm just going to quickly use a ruler to find that point. You can just continue to press up that uh, hem all the way across the bottom of your blind. So once we've stitched and pressed our side seams and we've pressed our hem, it will start to look like something, a nice lined blind. So what we're going to do now is we're going we're to stitch the seam across the top of the shade. So I'm going to open out our kind of cylinder that we sewn and I'm going to line up the two side seams and fold that in half to find the center point of the lining. I'm just going to make a tiny little nick in the lining fabric at the center. Tiny, just enough you can see it, find it later. I'm going to do the same thing for the main fabric. I'm going to fold it in fat half find the center point, make a tiny little clip. Once you've done that, we're going to turn the whole thing inside out. We're going to find those little clips that we just made. We're going to match them up. So I've got one in the lining, one in the main fabric. I'm going to pin those together. And once we've done that, we've matched up the centers. We're just going to lay it all nice and flat. And then we're going to pin those raw edges of the lining to the raw edges of the main fabric. Again, put in as many pins as you're comfortable with. And once you've got that pinned, I will again meet you at the sewing machine. So just so we're all clear, we are looking at the top of our blind now. We're going to be sewing a half inch seam allowance to secure the lining and the main fabric at the top. And you should have kind of a fold back of about an inch. Actually, it should be exactly an inch <laughs> if we've measured properly and sewn accurately. We're going to do a back stitch. We're going to continue sewing a half inch seam allowance all the way across the top of our shade. Make sure as you get to the last point that the seam allowance is facing away from you. Finishing with a little back stitch. So once you have the seam sewn across the top of our blind, we're going to trim the little corners, both corners, and then we're actually going to turn the whole blind right side out again. Again, you can use a point turner, whatever you need to make your corner roll all the way around to a nice sharp point. I'm just going to work it out myself. I'm going to do that at both sides. And then a very important step, we're going to be pressing the side seams along the whole length of the blind. So you may want to use a ruler for this. I'm just going to eyeball it because basically at the top we have a one inch um, return like a fold back, I guess I should say. So if I lay this down, the miter is kind of indicated one and a half inches at the bottom, and then we should have where the lining is attached should be an inch. So if I start from the top, I've got that guideline of an inch. So I'm 
pressing that nice and flat. We're also gonna have to roll the whole top seam nicely and press that as well. If you can kind of roll it out, but have the lining just kind of a little bit toward the lining, if you know what I mean. So it's like you can still see a little bit of that main fabric from the back. We, don't, we, want, we want to make sure that none of the lining shows through to the front side once it's pressed and once it's hanging. So just continue to do all that pressing down the length of the side seams on both sides and across the top of the blind. And then I'm going to show you how to mark the channels for the doweling. So once we have our sides pressed, plus the nice top hem pressed, it is going to start looking like a nice lined shade. It's still open at the hem. We need to leave that open so that we can fit in the metal rod at the bottom. So that's going to be one of the last things that we do. But for now, we need to calculate um, our spacing for the dowels that are going to be going across the shade. So as you can see, the shade right now is exactly the length of our window. It's 41 inches. Now the top inch of our shade is going to be securing it to the one inch piece of wood that we have. So there's going to be a one inch uh, piece of Velcro at the top. So really what we're left that's being drawn up is 40 inches. So I've calculated that I want about kind of like four large spaces and then a half space at the bottom that will tuck in behind those other spaces once they get folded up. So I'm going to take my 40 inches, plug that into my calculator, divide it by four and a half, and that gives me about 8.9. I'm going to round that down to eight and three quarter inches. So if each of my large spaces are eight and three quarter inches, I know I have four of them, so 8.75 times 4 is 35 inches. The total length of the blind that's being drawn up is 40, so I subtract 40 inches. So that leaves me a remainder at the bottom of 5 inches. So each 8 and 3 quarter section will get folded up in half, and then the last section will be 5 inches, so that will hang down slightly. Um, below the other folded loops and I'm very happy with that. Um, if you want to be even more precise so that that last little section just tucks up right behind those creases, you can do that math. But I'm happy with eight and three quarter inch spacings plus five inches at the bottom. So now I'm going to show you how to mark those spacings. So as we mentioned in our intro, we had a big time jump between when we started filming this video and continuing to film. So this is the part of the video that is now in the present. Um, we've looked at the past. Um, as I recall, the last thing that we looked at was calculating the spacing for our um, pockets. So we've calculated that we need um, four eight and three quarter inch uh, spaces and then that will leave us about five inches at the bottom. Um, I also need to mention that we're going to be adding one inch of Velcro at the top so I'm going to add that to the depth that I'm marking from the top of the drape. This is the top of the drape here. Um, these are the sides. Um, so I'm going to add nine and three quarters for the first pocket so I'm grabbing a ruler and I'm just going to indicate a few spaces across the back of the drape of that depth, nine and three quarters, that's eight and three quarters plus one. Now you want to make sure that your drape is nice and flat for this. We don't want to end up with any wavy lines or puckers between our main fabric and our lining. So once I've made a few marks all the way across, I'm just going to connect all of those with a nice straight line. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm just using a nice tailor's chalk. Use a nice contrast color with your lining. I'm using blue so I can see it really well on my white lining. So that's my first line. You probably can't see it on the camera, but it's there. Now I'm going to do the next spacing is eight and three quarters, and the next one again is eight and three quarters. Um, so I'll finish those lines and then I'll show you how to stitch on the uh, tool tape. Alright, 
So I've done the rest of the lines at the eight and three quarter inch spacing, and that left me with four and a half inches at the bottom. So that will tuck nicely at the end. You'll see it when we operate it, um, how the math has worked out. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna, we're gonna grab our twill tape. I've got a one inch twill tape, and I'm gonna, it has a nice uh, finished edge. It does have a raw edge at the end, so I'm gonna tuck that under, and I'm going to pin it to my drape. I'm gonna go about halfway into my seam allowance, that little edge on the side, which is an inch, so that'll overlap by about a half inch. I folded back the raw edge, that's going down, and then I'm going to pin it, so, and we'll take a close up of this, so that raw edge is um, kind of sitting under the line. If this is the top of the drape, we have our line and then we have the tool tape sitting just under that. And then I'm going to pin that in place all the way across the drape. Again, we want to make sure everything's really nice and smooth. We want to make sure we're not kind of pulling on the twill tape because we don't want that to pull in our drape. I'm going through all three layers the twill tape, the lining, and the main fabric. Just making sure that that edge of the tape is right along the line that you just drew. When I get to this end, I'm just gonna cut off um, the length of twill tape, tuck in that raw edge, and continue pinning. So just to keep clear of what we're doing here, we've got the top of our drape. We've got our first uh, tape pinned. Uh, this is our blue line you can see here. So we have the, um, the finished edge of our tape resting on that line. We're gonna do a very narrow top stitch on here, as close to that um, edge as you can, and that'll give us a lot of space for our dowel. I'm gonna start sewing at that folded edge. We've uh, folded the twill tape back. We're gonna start with a nice back stitch. I'm gonna remind you that we have white thread going through our needle, and we have a matching kind of blue-green thread that matches our fabric in our bobbin, and that'll make it look nice on both sides. Just making sure that that edge of our tape is right on the blue line that we drew. Now, as we approach the end of the twill tape, we're just going to stitch right to that folded edge and do a nice back stitch. All right, so everything is kind of coming together. I've stitched the rest of the channels for our dowels to go in. Um, please note that the bottom of the drape is still open so we can put in the metal rod at the bottom, but we'll kind of do that at the end because I don't want to have to deal with um, that metal rod in there. It makes it a little bit heavier. So the things we need to do are prepare our hardware, and I've actually already done that. Um, I'll just kind of show this to you as a visual. We've got the pulleys, try not to make too much sound, <laughs> um, and I've put one in the center, and then at the one end, I have the cord lock, and I've put that right at the edge of my um, one by two piece of wood here, and then I've put the other pulley um, flush against it and screwed those in place and then I basically put the other pull at the other side um, the same distance from the end as this pulley. I hope that makes sense. So we've got the cord lock, a pulley, we've got one pulley centered and the other pulley the same distance from the end as this one. Now the reason we need to prepare our hardware is because now we're going to be stitching the rings onto the back of our drape. So the spacing of the pulleys will indicate where the rings go. So if you can imagine, our drape will be um, hanging uh, like this. Um, the cord is gonna come up um, to my left, <laughs> your right, go through the pulley, and then go over towards the cord lock on the other side. So basically we're using, um, if you're looking at it from the back, I've got my left, your right, we want the cord to come up here so the rings need to be stitched that distance from the edge. So I'm just going to quickly measure that. So from the end of my 1 by 2 I am looking at about 2 and 3 quarter inches. So I'm going to measure on all of my 
uh, twill tape channels two and three quarter inches over and I'm going to take the clear rings that I have and I'll be stitching them at the top of the twill tape. So that's where we have drawn our line is where we're going to be stitching. So we're going to measure all of our measurements from the end of the board to where the cords are going to come up and then you're going to mark them on the back of the drape and then we can stitch on the rings. So we've got our ring marked. Um, we measured away from the edge. Um, note that the top of the drape is towards me, so we're going to be stitching at the top of the channel. I've got a needle threaded with a nice secure knot. I'm just going to put the needle through. Now note that I'm only putting the needle through the lining and the twill tape. I don't want my white thread to show on the front of my shade. So I'm just stitching through the twill tape and the lining. Obviously I'm going to run my needle through my ring. So this is kind of like sewing on a shank button. We're just going to put in some nice stitches to secure it. Now once you have enough stitches that you're feeling your ring is on very securely, you're simply going to wrap your thread just like we would sewing on a buttonhole, wrapping it around the base of our ring. And then we're going to run our needle through that yarn, that thread. Pull it tight. We're going to run the needle through that thread again, just to make it really secure. And then we can trim our thread really close to our stitching. All right, so I've done all my hand sewing, which I love. <laughs> um, all of the rings are attached, and I just want to remind you the spacing. Um, you can see, hopefully, when I lay this down, that all of the rings are kind of coming towards, to me, the left of the pulley, to you looking at the right of the pulley as the cords will come up. They'll go through the pulley, and then they're going to head towards the cord lock. Um, the next thing I need to do, and it's the last thing we're going to be doing at the sewing machine, is I'm taking the soft side of my Velcro, um, the non-scratchy side if you prefer, and I'm just going to stitch that to the top of the um, bar shade. Um, we're going to be stitching all the way around. I can show you exactly what that is like at the sewing machine. All right, so we're looking at the top of our uh, shade here. I'm going to line the Velcro right up to the edge, starting from one, from right from the edge here. We're going to be stitching along that top crease. I'm just going to take a second to mention we're just using a universal needle, size 12. It works for this weight of fabric. If you're using something heavier, you might want to be using a, a stronger needle. If you are more comfortable pinning your Velcro in place, uh, please do so but I'm just going to um, lay it flat and stitch as I go. We want to make sure everything's staying flat. We don't want the Velcro to pull our shade in and we don't want the Velcro to be waving either. So everything just kind of nice and even. Notice I'm using the soft side of the Velcro on the drape, uh, the shade in case it needs to be cleaned later, then you don't have to worry about the um, scratchy Velcro um, wrecking the fabric or anything else that's being washed with it. So as we approach the end of the shade, I'm just going to trim my Velcro to the right length. Continue sewing. I'm going to leave the needle in the work, raise my presser foot, pivot 90 degrees, continue sewing across the end of the Velcro. Do the same thing, leave the needle down, press your foot up, pivot, and continue sewing the other side of the Velcro. We want to make sure it's really secure. Alright, so what have we got so far? We have our lined uh, 
shade. We have our rings stitched. We have our channel stitched. We've just sewn on the Velcro. So at this point, all of the machine sewing is finished. So it's time to start putting some dowels and weights into our shade. So I'm gonna go to the bottom of the shade now. Now you'll recall that we have left the lining open at the bottom and that's so that we can get our weight, this heavier metal rod, into our hem. So I'm gonna do that now. Just kind of tuck it in there nicely. I did cut this to the width of the, um, of the shade, but not too wide so it's not gonna be poking the fabric, um, but it fits perfectly. The next thing I need to do is I need to slip stitch the lining to the main part of the shade around this whole hem. Uh, I'm not gonna show that. Uh, we do have a link to a slip stitch video if you wanna brush up on your slip stitch technique, but I will just do that now and then I'll show you how to put in the doweling and the cords. All right, so we finished a little bit more hand sewing. You probably can't uh, see it, but you might be able to hear that nice weight in our drape. So the next thing we wanna do is apply the shade to our header. So it's, figure out how it's gonna go, um, and then make sure you're putting your Velcro on the right side. So, I do not have a staple gun, um, so I'm using some sticky Velcro. I'd recommend, you could still use sticky Velcro, but secure it with a staple gun, um, just to make sure your shade's gonna be nice and secure. Um, I think I will add some staples to it later. I'm just going to be applying it to the side of the header. That is gonna be against the shade. You probably don't have to watch this, <laughs> but when I come back, I'll have applied all of the Velcro to the header. We have applied the Velcro to this edge, so we can carefully apply it to the top of our drape. Ah, starting to look much more like our finished shade. Of course, we need a way of drawing the shade up, so it's time to apply the cords. So I'm gonna prepare the cord, and then I'll show you how to apply it. So we have our drapery cord that we described in the intro um, as very, very strong and slippery, so it slides through all of our pulleys really nicely, and it's lightweight. Um, I'm gonna uh, measure out the first one approximately always erring on the side of caution with a little bit of extra. Um, I'm just gonna uh, roughly measure the length of the shade across the width of the shade because this one has to come up through the pulley, through both pulleys, actually all three pulleys, and then the cord lock. And then we're gonna need um, the pull as well. So we'll just measure another length of the shade and we're gonna cut that. Always make sure you have lots of cord on hand. It's very inexpensive. So the first thing we need to do is tie it to the lowest ring. Just gonna do a double knot there, really tight and secure. This will not show from inside the room. Anyone outside the window will see it. And then we simply run that cord up through the other rings above. Again, we're running it from the far end where the cord lock is. Go through first and then push it the right direction. We can go right through the top of the next pulley and the next one and then we'll go through the cord lock. But I'm just going to cut the other um, cords first and then I'll show you what to do at the cord lock. So working on the last cord feeding up through the pulley and then we're going to feed it across the top of the pulley. Now bear with me, I've never done this before, we're going to try and pull the cords through the cord lock. Now you'll notice this kind of metal piece, um, that gives us three places to have the cords so the cords won't uh, interact with each other. So let's see what I can do here. It's hard to kind of 
finesse. There we go. Oh, it worked. That's one. So we've got the one that's on the far end away from me going through the cord lock. So now we've got to get one through the middle and one through the top end. We'll see how that goes. Bear with me. So again, I think that's the thing to do is to go through the top and then come through. So we're basically going to, you'll see there's two kind of toothed rings, wheels, going between the two wheels that, um, with the serrated and that will hold the cords um, when we want to draw our shade. All right, so we got all the cords through the cord lock. I fed them through our pull. Um, I'm just going to tie the, the cords together just to keep them from sliding back through the pole, just to keep those safe. Um, I'm going to cut the cords to the exact size with the pole once the whole thing is installed. I almost forgot we still need to apply the dowels to the channels that we made um, in the back of our shade. So I'm just going to quickly do that. And that will give all of the stability to our shade when it gets drawn. Anyway, I'm just going to do the other two and then um, we'll take a look at the workings of the shade. Alright, so we have all of our dowels in place, so we're pretty much ready to go. Um, I'm just going to pick it up and show you how the inner workings all kind of work. Let's look at it from the back. So when we pull on our cords, that will draw the shade up. You'll kind of have to train it a little bit, but you can kind of see from this um, how little space it's going to take. So there we have our finished Roman shade. We're just going to install it on the inside of the window frame. Um, so it's ready to go. Thank you so much for joining us for this video. I hope you do have a chance to try this project yourself. Um, it really is a very economical project. You can see how little fabric it takes and supplies. Um, it can offer a lot of privacy. It can also add a lot of fun to your room. So thank you so much for joining us and I hope you have a chance to try it. I also want to mention that we have lots of other great YouTube uh, content, lots of DIY videos, um, projects for fashion, quilting, crafts, and other home decor projects. So join us there and don't forget we also have lots of um, extra special stuff on our Instagram page and Facebook page. Um, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And probably by the time this video is being posted, I believe our online store will be open. So please find us there and do some online shopping. Thanks. Mm -hmm.